Hey everybody, so today we're reading from Ron Fletcher's uh, deposition. Uh, it was dated in November of 1996. So it's a little bit of, uh, well it's not, it's a lot, it's 149 pages. So it's a lot, but the beginning <coughs> is pretty interesting because he starts telling a story and you know how he found Pilates and some other things. So just waiting for Elaine to join us and then we'll get started. So it's, yes, yeah, so I, I read it earlier and it's, it's pretty interesting, I think. Maybe, you know, if you're not, then I guess not. So we'll see. Let me see. I don't see her here yet. Just waiting. There she is. Let's see, can I? Yeah, so <coughs> it's a lot of stuff. There she is. Hi. Hey. My AirPods so stopped you, working. Again? Again. Oh my goodness. Can you hear the heater? No. Okay, good. I'm, I'm happy. What's up with that? I don't know. So look, look what's over here. Oh. Oh, chair. Oh, I thought you were showing that, that like fabric hanging down. No, that's just something. That was something I got when I was in India in the 80s. Oh. <laughs> When I went to study with BKS Iyengar. How nice. Yes, it was. Hi, Helen. Hello. Hey, oh, Helen. Hi. All right. So let's, let, let, so again, I, I already sort of announced, but I'll announce it again. This is, we're going to be reading from Ron Fletcher's uh, deposition from November of 1996. Cool. So, um, you, you know, to... the lawyer, you know, a deposition, usually that means there's a lawyer asking questions. We won't at, we won't like when they go back and forth, we'll, we'll skip that. But so it, it, this is um, the first question. I'll start. Okay. You know, the lawyer says, I want to start off asking you a number of questions as a foundation for your background, going pretty far back in your career. And I want to start because I don't actually know the actual genesis of your career in dance and studies and that whole area. And I guess if you could start me at, if you could start me as you know, in that area, that would be great. So here's the answer. Okay. Stop me if I'm too verbose because it's a long story. Ooh. Well, you know, by this time, yeah. I mean, it's like, this is nineties and, you know, and cause he says, well, I started. That, that sounds like came... a line of like a Prince song. Yeah. I don't know. I never listened to Prince. So, okay. If you say so. Well, I started and I came to New York in 1945 to study dance and to become more creative and get myself into the theater. My beginning in the whole world of movement was with Martha Graham. And I studied with Martha for a long time. I'm saying, I'm starting now, let's see, 1945, as close as I can remember, directly after the second war or whatever that war was. Okay and worked with Martha. I was very fortunate to be given a scholarship by Martha and worked with her for some time and just her. I'm cutting out a lot of material here, but the way I discovered Joe and Clara was that I was, that I had, oh, I had sustained a knee injury working with Graham. In those early days when Graham was doing a lot of experimental work and we were really simply creatures for her to experiment with. So we did a lot of things that she made up and we would throw ourselves around and try to please the great white mother. Okay, you wanna, <laughs> all right. So I think I'll go to the next questions asked. Let me see, is that too long? Let me just see. Yeah, you know, okay, yeah, so a little bit more. Okay. I also did some, I was also doing work there also to make a living. I don't know the, important this is I modeled for the art students league. I did lots of things. I posed for a Sears Roebuck catalog and Montgomery Montgomery Ward catalog. Wait, I was one of those like finding those catalogs. I know it'd be kind of fun, right? You would you would recognize him? Probably maybe not. I don't know. Maybe Probably pretty maybe much not. a lot younger than what we picture him as. Oh, yeah. So maybe yeah. we have to look at a younger picture. That'd be kind of cool. Ooh. Yeah. All right, you, you Pilates nerds, put, on the list. Yeah. <laughs> put it on there, go get it. I was one of those people who did all kinds of things. Let me see, yeah. 
to scratch out a living in New York. Well, they're still doing that. I did that. The best time of my life, I might add. The poorest, but the best. And I had a little apartment down in the village. Well, this knee problem kept bothering me and I had gone to several doctors. In the meantime, I had done, I can't remember quite when this happened, but I was doing a performance. I think I was performing at Radio City Music Hall at that time, which is pretty awful. Five shows a day, then rehearsing with Martha in between. Whoa. And my knee was giving me a lot of trouble and locking up and what have you. People, various doctors came and looked at it. In those days, we didn't have arthroscopy. So they said, we really need to go in and do, uh, am I being two? And then it stops. You want to pick it up from there? Sure. Um, then the lawyer, right? Q. Yes. Sir. That's, that's yep. And then Ron says specific here. And then the lawyer says no. So then Ron continues that they wanted to do exploratory surgery and I refused to do that. And the doctors were coming in at night when I was performing and kept shooting stuff into my knee. We were clever people, those dancers in those early days. And it finally got so bad that when I would go to make a jeté, air leap in the air kind of, the leg would lock. And I kept refusing to go to that kind of surgery. I was simply frightened of it and everybody else was too. So somebody asked a question about, um, who is this? This is Ron Fletcher's, it's his deposition from 1996. Yeah. Uh, somebody said to me, did you ever hear of Pilates? It's Pilates, oh, I guess it's the way you pronounce it. So I don't know how right. he pronounced it, but he says it's Pilates, whatever he said it as, by the way, it's not Pilates, which is probably the way I'm saying it now. It's driving me crazy. It would him too. Okay. And I said, no, I don't know about that, about that man. A lot of New York and all the things that were going on there were new to me then because I was right fresh out of Missouri. And I didn't know my butt from a $2 hat, really. <laughs> I love that. I might use that to describe it. <clears throat> you should. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of people like that. But they talked to me about Joe and I said, what is it that he does? And they said, well, he has this system of exercise and whatever and he uses equipment. And I didn't like the idea of the equipment so much because I was really a dance person and that true dancers kind of shy away from any of those things because now I see things like Nautilus and stair steps and things like that. God knows they're scary. Um, I hesitated about it, but the knee kept troubling me. So, and then I had met Allegra Kent who was with the ABT, I think. And she told me that she had been going over to Joe Pilates and that he did wonderful. It was wonderful working with dancers. I well, when I met Allegra, she was working in New York City Ballet. So maybe, I don't know, maybe back then it was ABT before City Ballet. Well, he sure. said, I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, it was wonderful working with dancers. I did not get to, I did not get to there from Martha Graham. And by the way, I read all the time that Martha Graham was one of the first students of Joe, and that is not true at all. Oh my goodness. <gasps> Debunking going on. <laughs> she, her ego was so big and his matched hers. <laughs> and I mean, I couldn't for the longest time even tell Martha that I was going to Joe. And Joe was a little pissed off that I went to Martha because he said, I can make you a dancer. You don't need that woman over there. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny. I know, um, that's, that's, I read this earlier. I was like, this is gonna be good. <laughs> and I used to sneak to go to Joe. Martha never studied with Joe until much later on when she was 82 years old or something and had arthritis. And then she went to Robert Alexander, I believe his name. I don't think, I think that was Robert Fitzgerald. I don't think it was Robert. I don't, I've, I've never heard of a Robert Alexander. And he was like, I think that's his name. So I, I'm pretty sure it was Robert Fitzgerald. Yeah, probably. But I could be wrong. Yeah. Um, so what that says is that all the people says, oh, Martha, you know, she got all her stuff from Joe and this and that and all that, you know, back and forth. Yeah. You know, Ron's like, yeah, you no, know, she never went there until 
way later and she didn't study with Joe. She studied with one of, you know, a student of, and I don't think Robert was, a, I don't know if he was a student with Joe or with what, or Corolla. I think she was Corolla's student, right? Wasn't he? I, you know, Robert Fitzgerald? I have, um, like, I have, it's not on my website yet, but I have like a little thing for him as like a history thing. Uh -huh. It's, I have that in there, but I don't remember off the top okay. of Okay. Well, well, you know, so. That's but enough. it wasn't, it, but she didn't study with Joe. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, he's mentioned in one of these things. He practiced Pilates. He did mostly, he used it mostly as therapy. Okay. So do you want me to continue? Yeah, go finish. Yeah, you go that. And then the next question I'll, I'll pick up. The next question. Gotta, okay. Yeah. So you got another page. You got this page in a little bit. All right. Go for it. Okay. I'm going to have to walk over to the door in a minute, I think, to open it. Okay, so back to my story. I finally, at the last resort, I found my way over to Joseph Pilates, and it was really a fascinating experience for me. Um, I came from this minimal, clean look of the Graham studio and, then, and the look of those bodies, and I walked. I went into this building with the elevator going, indicating sound. That's up a weird sound, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, into this funny, creaky old building. It was spooky over there on 8th Avenue, just spooky. It smelled bad, and I couldn't believe it. I thought nothing good can come out of this. <laughs> That's so funny. That's a New York moment anyway, right? Uh-huh, yep. Hold on, I just have to... Oh, there she is. My daughter's here. Um, hang on, let me just see where I was at. Uh, it smelled bad and I couldn't believe it. I thought nothing good can come out of this. I wasn't even sure I wanted to get off the elevator, but I did. And I walked into this room, a strange, big, long room, and old, old floors creaked and all of these things. And I looked into the room and I saw this strange assortment of equipment and it looked, and it really looked like a medieval torture chamber of some kind. Never heard that before. Well, uh, that, you know, when I, First opened my studio, Steve and Giordano and I were putting in the equipment and some woman walks by and she goes, looks around and she goes, you guys must be reincarnated. You, you used to torture people with equipment like this and now you're going to help them. And I was like, okay. Did she disappear in a puff of smoke? Well, she just walked away, but oh. that's what she, like she walked in, looked around and that's what she said and then she left. Hmm. That was it. I mean, maybe she came back for a session. I don't know, but you know, I was just like, <laughs> yeah, "Whoa, that was weird." Like you should have told her to come in and, like, you know. Right. Yeah. Well, we were we were like just loading stuff in, but you know, so wasn't set up yet. All right, go ahead. Um, okay, the reformers at that time had big claw feet, and everything just looked strange. And Joe was stomping around, being Joe, and Clara in her little nurse's uniform and her little Oxfords. <laughs> and I had made an appointment with them. And also at that time, I, there weren't very many people ever around. They were at a low, very low, low point when I found them. Well, more about that later, because when I read some of Ramana's stuff, it's just out of whack. <laughs> uh, can I just interpret, can I just- This is the, well, I, this is a question, oh, this is the lawyer. That's where you're gonna go? Or no? Yeah, so. So now we're now, so he finished and then the lawyer says, can I just interrupt you for one second? I'm sorry. Can you give me a sense as to the, what time frame we're in right now? And he said, and Ron says, I would say 1946, 47. So then he says again, so this is shortly after you had first gotten involved with the Martha Graham work. And the answer is right. And I wish I had, I mean, I meant to look up my resume today, but when I did my first Broadway show, because it was shortly after that. All right, so then it says, you were describing your earlier or your first time you went to the Pilates studio. Yeah, uh-huh. Can you tell me about what it was like? Well, I just seemed very strange to me as a dance person because of this strange equipment and kind of mindset. There was always, there was always there except for Clara, a kind of militaristic, dramatic thing. <laughs> okay, militaristic, dramatic thing. It, it was just part of Joe's personality. Well, there you go. It was his charisma. It was his style. And at first I felt uncomfortable. 
And then I, then I, well, my higher power said to me, just hang in there because it looks like something's got to come out of here. And so I met with Joe, who was rather terse, and Clara. I didn't talk with, I didn't talk with very much that first day. I talked with Joe about my knee and he said, come over here and lay down. And that was my first time that I, that I lay on the reformer. And I don't, I really can't explain what happened. It's interesting. We talk about these spiritual moments. That was one for me. I lay on that and I, I put my feet up on the bar and he talked to me about centering myself. And I did that. And as soon as I got centered on there, I thought, this is good. There's something very good about this. I felt comfortable. And then as we went on, how much do you want to, me to talk about here? <laughs> Okay, then he says, uh, you know, then the, uh, one lawyer says, you know, he probably doesn't want you to, you know, you know, say much more, but I'm interested. And then the other lawyer says, no, so am I, you know, and he says, okay. No, I, I would, I'm like, this is getting to the good part. I know. Yeah. So he says, yes, I liked it. Yes, I stayed to do that. What did you like about it? I don't know exactly what it was. I think it was a feeling. I think it was a connection with the man himself. I think that I firmly believe that I have been a dancer in other lives and there was just some kind of connection there that I felt this in the right place for me to be. And I'm going to stay here and I'm going to explore this situation. First of all, it made very great sense to me. Sorry, but I've been working a long, working so long with a lame knee, an injured knee and with shots in it and whatnot that I had set up a very definitive, de definite compensatory pattern in my way of moving, of dancing, of everything that I did. And it was also made me very cranky and everything that I did was always with my body weight over. One thing that I liked so much about that that struck me almost immediately was that I could work in a supine position with my body weight without my body weight over the injured part of my body and that I could move it back and forth against the tension of those these springs and feel comfortable about being on my center. That's cool. Yep. So that struck me almost immediately. I got, um, I, I got that almost immediately. Joe was very pleased. Joe was wonderful. Delicious man with the biggest ego in the whole world. He said, see, I fixed you or words to that effect. Well, he didn't fix me right then, but he did. <laughs> so you want to go from there? Sure. So then the lawyer said, and that was after one lesson? And then Ron Fletcher says, well, yeah. Well, it was before it was over even. <laughs> you know, that's really funny. How does that feel? How does that feel? I said, it feels marvelous. It didn't feel, I mean, it wasn't all gone, but it felt good to my body. At any rate, it wasn't fixed then, but eventually it built the muscles up around there and allowed my own body to work on itself and to make itself well. So the lawyer says, so I take it you went back for a lot of treatments? And then Ron Fletcher said, I went back, yes, often. The lawyer said, to just to deal with me? <coughs> oh, is that the last one? Uh, you should have more. Hold on. I think maybe not. Do we go with that many already? I think I am on the last page. Yep, that's all I have. Okay, well then I'll keep reading. Okay. Okay, two, just to deal with the knee, your knee injury, is that correct? That's what it started with. I was just concerned about the knee. But the more I went there, the more interested I became in the whole regime or the way of working. The equipment was very interesting to me. I was a non-equipment person, but I could see how all of these, all of those things worked with you almost as a partner and that it was a friendly apparatus. It was not something that I went in to fight like the Nautilus or the stair steps or something and be angry with them. It was something, it was friendly and pleasant and I really enjoyed it. Pretty cool. Yeah, I enjoyed I enjoyed very much. Joe was brilliant. I loved hearing him talk. I loved hearing 
he taught me a great deal about body mechanics, about how the body works and the muscle and the, about muscle impulse. I never heard that before because most dance people are more concerned with performance and most choreographers or teachers want to see this wonderful thing happen. They're not too concerned with what's happening with the body architecture. And Joe made me aware of that. There were also two teachers there who, shall I go on with this? Well, should we stop there? Yeah, it's a good idea. That's a good idea. Yeah, so that's a good place. So I thought, you know, I mean, there's, there's, so there's, that's what we did so far. And that's what we have left. <laughs> so we have a couple of weeks of this, I think. I mean, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. This is very interesting. If there, You know, if it gets, you know, less interesting, you know, we can skip over things and things like that as we go, as we go through this. But there's some good, it's good, 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 good story, right? That's great. He's a good, um, st like, talker. Yeah, he, yeah, he's a talker. Yeah. He's, he's very verbose. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he goes on and on. It's good. Yeah. But I, you know, and I, I like the, uh, you know, the, the, the thing of, you know, some, the historical stuff that we're getting because, you know, people oh. say certain things and he's like, no way. Martha did not study with Joe. So it's good. Yeah. You no. Know. Anything else? Um, I liked how you talk about like, you know, I, I did all, all kinds of things when I was trying to make it. Uh-huh. Mark, that's good. That's relatable. Well, I mean, yeah, I was a dancer. I had three jobs when I was in school. I did all sorts of crazy, you know, I did lots of different things because that's what you got to do. And I had a little apartment. It wasn't in New York, but I had a little apartment. Yeah. Yep. Well, I wasn't a dancer, but I was an artist, so I was similar, you know. Yeah, you know, dance, art, same thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, you work your ass off and you make no money. I was a cl I cleaned <laughs> doctor's offices at midnight. Oh. I did that. Yeah. You had free drugs when you did there or what? No. Oh, okay. Just yeah, maybe they left things lying around or something. Like that. No. no. Just teasing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. No. All right. I so think I think that that that's one of the things yeah. So that that's it for today. So, uh, and on Wednesday we have uh, another article. We'll okay. announce it on. Or, I mean Thursday. We'll announce it on Thursday morning, right, or Wednesday night. Yeah, Thursday morning. All right, Thursday morning. We'll, we'll be doing another another article about Joe. So. Mondays is going to be the historical documents and, uh, you know, as far as different things from different people. And then on Thursday, we'll be reading the, the different articles. So, you know, a little bit of reading if you're interested in the history and what's going on. So thanks for joining us. Yeah. If you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. Well, that's all right, Mr. Frank Sinatra. That's it. New York, New York. It's a hell of a town. Bronx <laughs> is up and the battery's down. All right. There you go. Okay. I, did, I worked on that show, but that's okay. All right. All Thanks, right. everybody. We'll Thank see you. you. Uh, we'll see you next week. Yeah. Or, or no, Thursday. Hopefully, we'll see you Thursday. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. Bye bye. All right. Bye.